Hi everybody, hope you're well. This is part 21 of 31 Days in August. Yes, it's nearly over. So, yeah, that's some good news for some people, I'm sure. Um, today's comic, or rather comics, um, is possibly one of my uh, all-time favourite crossover events ever. Um, probably, It's probably bigger than Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's probably more um, massive than the original Marvel superhero Secret Wars. And it, it brings together two of my favourite TV series of all time. Uh, they're at both at least in the top five of my all-time favourite TV series of all time. And it is... The Simpsons Futurama Crossover Crisis 2. That's issue one. I'll take this out of here. This is issue two. Now, as I said, this is the this is the second crossover between Simpsons and Futurama. Uh, the first one came about where the um, the big space brains who the, frequent the Futurama universe every now and then, um, they caused a, a paradox where the Simpsons characters, uh, no, sorry, the, the people, the characters from Futurama were trapped in the Simpsons comics. Uh, in this one, we have Professor Farnsworth from Futurama TV series. He uh, has created a device that can cut through the space kind space time continuum um it looks remarkably like an old a really old ipod uh connected to a pair of scissors it's the only way i can really describe it um and what happens is he uses it to cut a copy of the simpsons comic sadly unfortunately worryingly enough he cuts too much of the comic and every single character that is in that comic appears in the Futurama universe and runs completely amok. The people of New New York have no idea what is what they're going to do. They've got all these strange people, stranger people, running around the streets causing mayhem wherever they go. So Professor Farnsworth comes up with the idea that, well, they're not actually human. They're not really human. They are creations. They are the figment of somebody else's imagination. So in which case, because they're not human, they don't have human rights. And by that logic of thinking, they can be used as slave labour. <laughs> um, so all the people from the Simpsons series, from the Simpsons universe get collected up and uh, put to work um, you um, see Fat Tony and his, and his gang become maids for the Donbot you have Mo Sislak still, be, still being a bartender but in a bar full of robots uh, you have Mr. Burns wooing Mom from Mom's conglomerate company that owns near enough 99.9% .9 of everything in the future. And strangely enough, you have Apu Nahasapi de Pedalon working in a convenience store. <laughs> um, the first issue has some fantastic... Uh, Mickey takes of some great science fiction movies. You've got a bit where the the Simpsons and the uh, Planet Express team go to an ice planet and they get attacked by um, a Wumper, which is, if you remember in Empire Strikes Back, I believe that's the name of the creature anyway, in Empire Strikes Back, it's the big, woolly, hairy, white creature that's on the uh, ice planet of um, Hoth and it captures 
Luke Skywalker and hangs him up in its cave, and then Luke Skywalker ends up using the Force, getting his lightsaber and chopping the arm off of the of the creature. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's a Wumpa. I'm sure it was called a Wumpa. Um, but you get the Simpsons and the Planet Express Express crew uh, hanging upside down in this groaning gr graining verse, if you want to call it that, version of a Wumpa. Um, you also have um, everybody in a scene that is a pure um, Mickey take of the Alien movies with Marge Simpson in the big um, sort of like moving machine thing, which Sigourney Weaver used in the in the second in the the Aliens movie to attack the the Queen Alien, um, and probably one of the best. Best scenes of all in the first issue is where they go to um, a place in out in space, number two zero zero one or two thousand and one, <laughs> where they deliver a parcel to the um, infant mind of the the universe, um, and when they look beyond the gates of where this you know, this um, infant mind of the universe from 2001 a space odyssey lives you see the um do you remember that really trippy scene where uh dave looks into the um the obelisk and he sees all those light shows that are flashing past him and he sort of completely trips out and everything they see that <laughs> going past them which is absolutely brilliant in fact, i'll show you it i don't know if that can come up there you go Absolutely brilliant. Um, eventually, they get back to Earth after flying around the universe. And um, Bart Simpson gets hold of these interdimensional scissors. He's mucking about with them. And all of a sudden, he throws them out the window. And they land in a library where they sporadically start cutting into the books in the library, bringing to life, bringing into reality, all the creations of all these fictional stories. You've got um, Dracula, you have um, Huckleberry Finn, you have uh, Paul Bunyan, um, you know, you, if you... Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is in there as well. Uh, any any fictional character you can think of, um, or well-known fictional character you can think of, they've got them in this issue. Uh, in part two, everything goes completely crazy. Uh, you have the, the fictional, fictional characters, non-Simpsons fictional characters, completely running amok. Absolutely causing mayhem. Uh, Dracula is now mayor of New New York. Um, uh, the Simpsons and the Planet Express, Express crew are trying to save the world from all this problem that's happening. So they go to see if they can find Waylon Smithers to see if he can help them um, take everybody back to their own universe and put everything right in the future armor universe. Um, there's a really funny thing where um, Hermes Cuba, which is Professor Farnsworth's clone son, and Hermes' son are running down the street being chased by the complete works of Stephen King. Uh, you've got the car Christine, you've got uh, the clown Pennywise from this his story It. You've got uh, Carrie covered in blood. You have um, I can't remember the character's name, but the the main character was played by Jack Nicholson and Stanley Kubrick's um, Shining movie um, from The Shining. You've got Cujo in there as well. Um, you've got a kid running along the street wearing. Uh, an Amish hat and chasing after him with a corn. 
um, which I take is something to do with uh, Children of the Corn, which I didn't realise was a Stephen King book. But anyway. um, possibly it could be. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it all complete hell breaks loose. Uh, you have Captain Ahab from Moby Dick capturing Doctor Zoidberg. Um, you have got um, Peter Pan flying off with Amy Wong, yeah. <laughs> and to top it all off, Bart Simpson makes an astonishing discovery that possibly there were some graphic novels in the library when these dimensional cutting scissors went through there, due to the fact that in the shadows of the alleyways you see these figures that look suspiciously like characters from the DC and Marvel universe. Only suspiciously though, because you can't really see what they are. Possibly it could be Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk and and Wolverine and Captain America and Superman and Wonder Woman and Batman. Possibly it could be them. I wouldn't like to say. I wouldn't like to get anybody at Bongo Comics into trouble. Um, but it, it, complete madness uh, ensues. Um, Homer tries to find a weapon and he only th the first thing he picks up is an MC Escher sketch which MC Escher is the guy that painted that picture which has all the stairs making you know, going down and coming up at the same time and going all which way and wibbly wobbly sort of thing um and there's you know that's what you know and it's an MC Escher sketch brilliant <laughs> And uh, to to bring the insanity even further to the edge, you then have from the very first Bongo Comics issue that they produced, you have the giant size Homer Simpson that was in the first issue of The Simpsons that was created by Bongo Comics years ago. I think it was about 19, uh, la, la, 1998, I think it was, 1990. Seven, something like that. Might be later than that. And they use him to round up all of the uh, fictional characters and send them back to where they come from, to the books that they, they belong to. Eventually, the Simpsons are also sent back, and everybody from the Simpsons universe are sent back to their own universe with the exception of some hair from the head of Mr. Burns. Well, I hope it's from his head anyway. It might be from his chest hair, you never know. And we see Mom in her cloning facility making a perfect duplicate of Mr. C. Montgomery Burns. Excellent. Um, yeah, this is pure Simpsons and Futurama insanity. If you like The Simpsons, you will love this series. If you like Futurama, you will love this series. If you like um, anything done by Matt Groening, you will love this series. If you like funny comics, if you like science fiction, if you like um, just any kind of literary um mishmash you will love this series it is pure insanity gone haywire um you know if if you if you haven't got this series and you're a simpsons or futurama fan then you really are missing out it's it's going to be the only time you ever see these characters together in the same place apart from a few occasions where you've seen Bender in Moe's in, uh, Mo Tavern very briefly. You've seen um, Bart Simpson in Futurama. Uh, the episode where they've got this big giant ball of garbage coming towards the earth. And Fry, Leela and Bender go on to, onto this asteroid a la the film um, Apocalypse. And... Um, 
they um, have to blow up this rub this ball of rubbish. When they get there, they find a big mound of talking Bart Simpson's toys, where Bender pulls the string of the Bart Simpson's toy. The toy says, "Eat my shorts." I won't do a Bart Simpson's impersonation because I'm not very good at that. And um, Bender then complies with this uh, request from the toy and eats its shorts. Um, there's other other things as well, other moments as well, where you've seen very small crossovers between the Futurama and Simpsons universe in the in both TV series. But I mean, if they well, the chances of it happening now is probably very slim on TV, seeing that Simpsons are still being are still being made and owned by Fox, and um, Futurama are now being made by um is it comedy central yeah comedy central america so the chances of seeing those two universes getting together on tv or even in the movies will probably be slim to none unfortunately so if you ever wanted to see characters from both of these great tv series in one place this is the place you're going to see it the simpsons futurama crossover crisis 2 and like i said the first uh, two issue series they had of it, which was the Future Armor Simpsons Crisis on no Infinite Crisis crossover special number one and two. Uh, I think that's what it was called. So, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Must have really for anybody who's a comic book fan or Simpsons Future Armor fan. So, there you go, that's today's comics. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you everybody for subscribing. I checked on my channel uh, view count of the day, and the, I had a brilliant number: ten thousand six hundred and sixty-six. You can't get a better number than that. Well, you can actually. Probably a few million would be nice, but yeah, small steps. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Um, there are only nine more of these to go so if anybody out there is getting seriously bored about this don't worry it ain't gonna go on for long and if anybody's out there who's enjoying this sorry but it's got another nine issues to another nine parts to go but you know i ain't gonna go that far um so yeah thank you for watching take care join us again tomorrow for another completely random comic for my collection and um yeah, keep giving me those two numbers, one between 1 and 51 and one between 1 and 300. So, yeah, see you later, have fun, ta-ta for now.